preparing. And I just keep smiling during this time, setting up your meeting for Facebook Live. Redirecting. And it says we're live. We are, we are live. Good. Redirecting. Oh, yeah. And oh, good. I can hear my voice. We are live. So good morning. Good morning. It is Morning Devos with Jen. And I have a special guest with me this morning, my good friend, Kathy Casement. So good morning, Kathy. <laughs> and so I have known Kathy, oh, for a long time, like since, okay, so Kathy has four kids, uh, Laura, Erica, Marlena, and Stuart. And I remember babysitting the twins, Erica and Marlena, before you left um, so in Kathy has gone through several phases of her life. Yes. And so for uh, one of her phases, she was a missionary. Her family was a missionary uh, to Africa and uh, part of Galcom International, if I'm correct. Yeah. And uh, so before they went on another uh, mission, I got to babysit the twins when they were probably very small, maybe a year or two. I remember they were quite young. And then when they came back, they were in my youth group and Kathy was a part of my church family and uh, worship team. And I've got to sing with her on worship and lead worship together and have just had so many really good, deep theological conversations. And now Kathy is the lead pastor at my home church and she looks after my mom and she does such a good job. I said to her yesterday, you're a good pastor for my mom. And so I'm so thankful that I get to entrust my mom to Kathy's uh, pastoral care and her kindness and, and love for Jesus. <clears throat> and so yesterday I said, I'm, we're going to start a new Christmas series. It's called the, the Songs of Christmas. And uh, so I called Kathy because she loves music and I just remember so many wonderful uh, practices and uh, cantatas and Christmas Eve services. But I think one of my favorite parts was just how you would share your heart with us about the song. And, and so I thought, I'm gonna call Kathy and say, would you share with us tomorrow? Because my guest that was supposed to be here got sick. And so she's gonna be on for next week. So I'm like, Kathy's musical and she loves Jesus. So I'll call her and say, hey, can you, can you share with us this morning? And so Kathy, I'm so glad that you've joined us this morning. And so what is, what is the song that you chose as one of your favorite Christmas songs? Well, when Jen, when you asked me for my favorite Christmas song, I like, I didn't know how I was going to pick a favorite and uh, I don't want to offend any of my other favorites. Christmas songs, you know, by picking just one, it's like as if a song has an uh, emotion. But like within a minute of you asking me, I knew exactly which one. And it's a kind of an, an unconventional song choice. So before I reveal the song, I'd like to just give you a little bit of the background of how it came to be my one of my favorite Christmas songs and just create a little suspense if that's okay. Yes, um, go for so it. I love Christmas songs, like Jen said. Uh, I love Christmas pageants, and I've planned and directed many over the years. Uh, but one Christmas, several years ago, I was planning for the entrance of the wise men into the nativity scene for the Christmas Eve service. And we were going to be in the fellowship hall that didn't have like a direct side stage entrance. And so what I decided to do is have all the characters in costume, but sitting in the audience with their families. And it would be dark and the, the spotlight was on the stage. So people sitting around them probably wouldn't even notice that they would be sitting there with a costume on in the congregation, you know? So, so then the scripture for the wise men was read. And then the, the, when the, the wise men would then get up from their seats and we'd usually sing a song like we three kings of Orient are, you know, but I, I just, I didn't want to do something predictable. And, um, and when I was planning it and I was kind of visualizing these people coming forward to the nativity, uh, it kind of hit me what song we should sing. And uh, it was just as I am without one plea 
but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. And on that Christmas Eve night, I was sitting on the sidelines with the worship team, and as we sang, I watched the wise men get up out of their seats and come to the stage. And it was like a Christmas altar call, a manger scene altar call. And I know that I kind of planned it into the program, but seeing it happen really stirred my heart. And I began to think of the other characters as well. Um, verse two, just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blot to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot. O Lamb of God, I come, I come. And so I was thinking about when the shepherds came to that Lamb of God. It was one of those full circle moments. The Bethlehem shepherds were the ones who cared for the sheep that would eventually be chosen to be the Passover lamb. The priests would trek down from Jerusalem, down to Bethlehem to get the unblemished lamb and take it back up to Jerusalem for the Passover celebration. And that's what happened every year. And so these shepherds cared for lambs that were actually chosen for Passover each year. And now here they are coming to the Lamb of God, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. So the meaning of the song became even more significant to me. And then the, the last verse, and I know it's the ungodly hour. I am not a morning person. Thank you, Jen, very much. But um, I'm going to try and sing this last verse. And I'll probably sing it lower than I would in a congregation because, because it's the morning. So the last verse says, um, just as I am, thou wilt receive, wilt welcome, pardon, cleanse, relieve, because thy promise I believe, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. And so that goes back to the prophecy of Isaiah 9, to us a child is born, a son is given. It's the fulfillment of the promise of the coming of Jesus, because thy promise, I believe. And I don't know, it just real, really feels personal to me at that point. So, so I'm sorry, Jan, if this isn't what you were anticipating for your favorite Christmas song. But to me, this has always been the Billy Graham evangelism song, right? You know, that's how it's what it's always been for me. But from that moment and in that specific pageant, just as I am, will always be now a Christmas song to me. And I've included it with almost every Christmas season since then. As a matter of fact, we just sang it this past Sunday for our first Sunday of Advent. And I think the reason that um, it's my current favorite is because it gave me a fresh perspective on Christmas. And we always look for something new and fresh, you know, to, to liven up a, an old familiar story. And this is sort of that golden nugget that has been feeding my heart with a new thought. Uh, Christmas is an altar call. It's a come to Jesus, literally a come to Jesus moment for all the characters in the story. It's this invitation to come. So so that's my story and I'm sticking to it. I love it. That idea of, and yeah, like just Christmas is an altar call. It's an altar call to come to Jesus. And, and as we were talking beforehand, I was thinking like every single one of the Christmas story characters has, I want to say a just as I am story. Mm -hmm. And you have, you know, Mary and Joseph mm -hmm. you have, you know, who both needed angels to appear to them and say, fear not. Yeah. And then you have uh, Zachariah and Elizabeth who were beyond childbearing uh, age. And you have Zachariah who didn't believe. And you had uh, Elizabeth who probably was socially ostracized a little bit because she had no children. And then you have the shepherds who were looked down upon in society. Mm -hmm. And then you had uh, the wise men who were Gentiles who would not have been welcome mm -hmm. in, 
in the Jewish religion. And yet there's, there's Jesus in this manger, just saying, just as you are, like, no matter what kind of background, no matter what your doubts are, no matter what you have believed in the past, you come just as you are. And let's do life together. Like, just, just come. Mm -hmm. And so as, yeah, as, as Kathy said, just as I am, I was like, okay. (laughs) I I knew that you would be surprised at that choice. And I didn't choose it for the sake of surprising you, but it really, (laughs) it really has been um, something that has brought a fresh perspective uh, for me. And so, but I'm, I'm sort of a rebellious person anyway. I sing Easter songs at Christmas and I sing Christmas songs at Easter. I, I do that because I, I like to kind of um, shake things up a little bit and, and, you know, Christmas, I talk about the crucifixion. I mean, that just, it just happens, you know, we having communion this Sunday. And so you have to talk about the, the crucifixion and the meaning of why Jesus came. And you can't just have Christmas without that. So it, it did bring a, a new perspective to me when I, when I started in with that song, it's like, wow, why haven't I done this before? But yeah. Oh, such, such a good Christmas song, which is all about Jesus coming the first advent. And so that's a reminder of us to us that just as we are, no matter where we find ourselves, we need to come to Jesus. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah. I think it was, the, what are the words in the last verse again? Just as I am, thou wilt receive, wilt welcome, pardon, cleanse, relieve, because thy promise I believe. O Lamb yeah. of God, I come. Will welcome, pardon, cleanse, cleanse. relieve. Yeah. Like that's, that's the story for each one of us is that welcomes, pardons, cleanses, and relieves. I love that last word. Like he welcomes, pardons, cleanses, and then he relieves, he lifts the burdens of our sins. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it reminds me of that verse in, uh, in Acts where, where Peter is saying, you know, repent, you know, come, come to Jesus, repent so that times of refreshing may come, you know, like that's what God wants to do for us too. You know, there are other Christmas songs that say, you know, come like, a like the, um, angels, we have you no know, angels from the realms of glory, you know, come and worship, you know, there's, there's other times when we're, you know, Oh, come all ye faithful. We're, we're, we're told to come. And so it's not a new idea for Christmas. It's just a new different song yeah. bringing in the idea that gives the fresh perspective. Yeah. So as as we come into this Christmas season, as Advent is this, we're waiting for the birth, right? We we need to just come. We need to prepare ourselves to come. We need to just come to Jesus uh, during the season and beyond. So for those of you who have never made that choice of coming to Jesus, we encourage you to, to just take up those words of welcome, pardon, cleanse, relieve, whatever you need relief from today, like Jesus can cleanse and and relieve you of that burden. And for those of you that have been serving Jesus for a really long time, you might need a fresh reminder of just the Jesus that you serve, that he does welcome, that he has pardoned, that he has cleansed, and he will continue to relieve you of the burden of your sin and care. So Kathy, would you pray for us this morning? I certainly will. So Father God, we just thank you that you are always uh, fresh and you always bring a new perspective and you always are very relevant to us and what we need in every situation and every time of our lives. And I thank you uh, that you are a cleansing God. I thank you that just as we are, doesn't matter. Um, we can come and you will cleanse. And I just pray that as, as we enter into this Christmas season now, um, that there will be a, a freshness that comes from you, Lord. May this, this old familiar story that has been told hundreds and hundreds of times, may it be uh, fresh. May we recognize it personally for each one of us in a fresh way. And Lord, just give us somehow, just give us that 
that little golden nugget to chew on, Lord, that will, will, will feed us and nourish our souls uh, for this Christmas. Lord, I just thank you. Um, I just really thank you that you uh, bring new ideas. And uh, I know that there are many other new ideas out there and you're speaking in many different ways. Um, but when it becomes personal to us, then it's just a, it's, it's a come to Jesus moment. It's a wow moment. And we just give you all the praise uh, for just recreating that amazement in our hearts and lives. So we look forward to more moments of this as you refresh us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <sighs> I've been encouraged in my spirit already. And look at that. It's only 7.15. Oh, it's time to go back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <clears throat> Kathy, thank you so much for joining us this morning and encouraging us. We, I, I pray that your ministry at Verona would just be blessed and the people there would just be encouraged in their spirit and would come to Jesus this season. So with that, our dear friends, remember to like, share, go outside today and help your community experience Christ. We'll see you later. Bye.